and I'm a proud Ghanaian against child abuse. Uh, let's have a conversation on the back of that. We started off on Tuesday talking about the physical, the verbal abuse. Today we're talking child marriage. In uh, 2016, the government of Ghana launched the End Child Marriage Campaign and subsequently the national framework with a two-year operational plan for the End Child Marriage Campaign. What have we achieved as a nation two years down the road? Whilst you reflect on that, we have Emmanuel Nyakotete, who's child rights activist with GACA. Uh, and we had him here on Tuesday. He's back this time. We're talking child marriage. Good morning to you. Good morning, Mama Lee. Thank you for coming back. <laughs> Thank you for having me. So uh, let's just put the conversation in context. When we say a child, who is a child? Thank you once more. And good morning to your cherished viewers. Under our laws and international convention, uh, anyone under the age of 18 is a child. And Ghana was one of the nations, the first nation that actually ratified the United Nations Convention on the Right of the Child. And these actually also spelled the same age for states, I mean, that have ratified that convention. And this convention is the most ratified convention mm -hmm. in the whole world, except only two countries have not ratified it. But we are the number one, and at any given time, we should give that example. So we are mm. talking about anybody within that age range. Mm. If, if we're the first to do this, then um, it's because we knew the importance of it. Exactly. So one would expect that we're in line, and there's <laughs> nothing like child marriage in Ghana. Yeah. But that's not the picture. Exactly so. How bad is it? Good. Don't parents know that children below 18 cannot be married off? Yeah, I would say that, yes, if you look at the general issue, we can say that low awareness is one of the factors. But most of it is because of tradition, custom, religious, and what have you. Mm. So here we are talking about a child marriage as any relationship between any one party or the other, or both that are under the age. So if children under the age of 18 are married, it's still child marriage. And more importantly, if one of the parties is older and the other one is under 18, then it's also child marriage and it becomes even more serious and what have you. Both are not good. So we are talking about relationship and for that matter, marriages that are contracted between people or parties of this age group. And the history to this whole thing even started as early as 1948, when the Universal Declaration on Human Rights, uh, 1948, was signed after the League of Nations fails and all the nations comes together and write. Article 16 of that one says that any marriage is supposed to be between people who have their full freedom and consent. So at any given time that a marriage is contracted and one party did not give the full consent and understanding, then that is against that one. As time went on 1980, CEDAW, uh, Convention on Elimination of All Discrimination Against Women, mm. also reinforces this, let alone, and it has traveled up to this very time. We may talk about the United Nations Convention on the Right of the Child, which also talks about all the forms of protection of children, including their protection. We are supposed to protect the children. We are supposed to help them to have their participation freedom and survivor. Mm. So at any given time that you give a child into a marriage, it means that these fundamental rights that are in the UNCRCC, U UNCRC, and our own laws, I mean our constitution and the mm. children's rights is being violated. So here, this is what happens. We have all these laws that govern us mm. that are supposed to but implementation is the problem. So yeah. yes, to some extent, some people are not aware, but to a large extent, we sometimes do not forcefully implement our laws. Mm. So people go test this and they think that they can do away with it and they continue doing whatever that they have been yeah. doing. Yeah, but to be fair, uh, Ghana is not the only place where children are being married off or people are even marrying children. I heard about the United States and, and this is something that is even <laughs> ongoing today. It's so true. it's a global issue exactly. in as much as it's a Ghanaian issue. Uh, so really, what's the way forward? As we're campaigning, what's, what's the message and who are we directing the message to? Good. 
we are directing all of us and it is everybody's business because the effects are so devastating we will look at them in a short while i mean having educational effect economic productive and what have you but like you said it's a global phenomenon mm -hmm. and it affects every person living everywhere even now when you look at the statistics ghana is doing well and africa in that, for that matter, even yes. though of course it's not good exactly enough. currently we have uh, with 25 percent national rate that is ages between 20 to 24 uh, are married before the age 18 which means that it is one of among every five female and the three northern regions have one among every three so that is the highest rate in the country but we are saying that we are doing it but it's not enough because of the adolescent age group mm -hmm. if we do not fight it it will get with some and go up also more cultural Exactly. Mm. And when you go back to our history, and these days, usually in the early days, we use to calculate it and we look at the age between 20 to 49. But now we are doing away with that one and restricting it to 20 to 24. Because in the olden days, when you actually talk to mothers who are 40 and 45 and 50, the majority of them were married when they were within that age. Yes. But this is the time that we have not taken upon ourselves to see and actually implement or formulated any rule to go by. And they were also having their challenges. So during those times, it's highly risk that you'll be, mm -hmm. even our own tradition, immediately a woman passes through, I mean, goes through menstrual, whatever, bra growing kind of thing. is like advertisement matured. for all those for it and yeah. things of that nature. Mm -hmm. Our economy was also allowing it. Because those days, if you're a young man and you, can know, you know how to uh, uh, hunt, yeah. and you can have your farm. But That's the economy it. and everything has changed. Mm -hmm. So we have taken upon ourselves and we need to do that. Asia is one of South Asia specifically is one of the countries that are now leading Africa, Sub-Sahara. This very well, we are doing a little bit better, mm. but we are saying that if we do not fight it, that is why Gaka has taken upon ourselves. Very soon we will overtake them because they are working hard. The numbers that are increasing, uh, decreasing there, is going faster than that of our. Mm. So, like I said, we are doing well, but that shouldn't mean that we are okay and we should relax because yeah. the effect are so devastating. L let's also look at the effects directly on these young girls at the center of it. But first of all, can you resist it at a ch as a child? Yes, and that is why we need to make them aware, strengthen institutions so that they can be able to resist some of these things. And they should have places to report to for support. Mm. And for that matter, when that is done, then we are going to, we need to empower them in the first place. So the effect, I just want to put them in a broader sense, educational effect, and here we even look at the mother and the child that will come from that marriage. We can also look at violence in general, which will also go against the mother. We can also look at economic, which is going to affect the mother and the child. We can look at social, which is also going to affect the mother and the child. Why am I saying that uh, educationally is going to affect the child and the mother? The mother will definitely draw up, drop out from school. Yeah. And it means that this will also have various consequences. This very person might have not acquired any skills. Mm -hmm. Occupationally will not be mobile. I mean, normally they are restricted to be doing some chores in their homes and things of that nature. They are not able to take good care of their children. It means that they will also not be able to uh, get income to support their children. Most of the time, when this happens, gender inequality is also a factor. So this woman in this marriage do not have any say. And when that happens, the very person is also already depressed mm. and will not have bounding relationship with the child. I, I, you know, I realize that once you're a child and you're married to a grown man, he treats you like a child. Exactly so. He makes all the decisions for Exactly you. so. So you are not able, you yourself, you are not happy. And so right from the time that the child that is coming to come out of this relationship is in the womb, the child is even suffering. Because now research has made it clear that when you are in the womb, the child is picking some signs and mm -hmm. feeling whatever you are feeling outside. So if this child is born in that very state, we have a very big problem. God in his own wisdom created human beings such that a child is the only, I mean, baby is, human babies are the only ones that need more caring before they can develop their full potential. In fact, if a child should be born with all the brains developed, the child should have stayed and spend 18 months in the womb. And you could imagine what will happen. Mm. So when a child is born, the child still needs all the caring so that the full potential will develop. So we are saying that when children are married and they become mothers and they don't even know, they don't have any skills, they themselves are not emotionally mature. 
how can they take care of their children? So in the first place, there will not be what we call attachment, mm. proper bonding, emotional bonding to care for this child so that the child will develop emotion, social emotional competencies for further academic work and productive work for them to be the leaders and the future of this very nation. And the nation depends on that. And more importantly, to add to that one, the SDG Go 5 says that we should end all kinds of gender inequality and specifically mention one of the indicators is to end child marriage. Mm. So when we are not doing that, well, it means that one of the major goals uh, that we are all working towards 2030 is being defeated mm. and it is bad. When we talk about social, it means that that very person who has been married at that age cannot even uh, associate with the age groups and cannot say change the thing. And the elderly women too might also not be there mm. for him or her. Most of the time, such people are usually the second wife or what have you. So rivalry and what have you, in that sense, they become isolated and the peep depression and what have you are all kind of things that happen. Health-wise, you know, of fistula and all those kind of things. It is actually uh, sexual uh, abuse that leads to all these things. Yeah. Teenage pregnancies and what have you. And a child taking care of a child, what will be the result? And result might be people who have not been properly brought up, they don't have any skills to find job, arm robbery and they all kinds of social plan for their children. Exactly. Because they may not even know what exactly. options they have. Exactly. Yeah. Biologically their bodies are even not ready. Mm -hmm. So it leads to maternal mortality, morbidity and all kinds of health challenges and so but on. But I'm so forth. thirteen and I am about to be married off. I don't I don't want it. But so what can I do? You have to report to somebody, somebody like you. You can come to any of these radio stations. That is what Gaka is here campaigning. And like you mentioned in the intro, the Ministry of Gender, Children and Social Protection is doing well. Ghana actually was one of the nations, one, you are among one of 109 nations that in 2013 actually pre-sponsored the policy to discuss this uh, at the UN to bring an end to it. And Ghana has gone ahead to develop this framework and develop implementation plan that we are all mm. following and we are all helping. They are bringing about all together all the stakeholders so that chiefs, elders, uh, our paramount chiefs will help to actually re-look at our laws. Some of those things that promote, seems to be promoting so that we do away with all these things. And when issues of that nature also come to them, they will actually also help to forward it to the appropriate places. Because by law, anybody who contracts these laws is illegal. And most of the time, they are not registered. Mm. So if you are in your community, you are a community leader, you are a chief, and somebody comes to you, report to the appropriate places. Dobsu is there, Galka is there, all kinds of social groups. And now, the churches are also taking on the challenge, mm. so you can talk to any of them. Okay, all right. Uh, just before we wrap up, any other things you want to add to the conversation? Anything that we missed? Yeah, what I want to say is that it is everyone's business to protect our children. It is against the fundamental human right of a child to be forced into a marriage. Mm. It takes abuse, because anything that you do will affect the child's development, survivor, and dignity and for that matter since these will normally cause the children to drop out from school and we are promoting their welfare we want them to be able to contribute their quota to this economy we need to do away with that because when you marry early there is a need that you are going to give birth and have more children mm -hmm. population growth will be going up and we will not be able to meet it with our developmental agendas it becomes a big problem so it is our responsibility to make sure that we don't encourage this. If I, in this country, more women are out there than men. Mm -hmm. So why will you go and look at a baby, your own child's face, and say that I'm marrying him or her? You can't make any decision with a person. It is a bad, it's a harmful practice. And we must all say no. Join Gaka today to say no to child marriage. Mm. But we know that this is also kind linked closely with poverty. So eradication of poverty, uh, you know, poverty eradication, if you like, can also greatly help exactly. in, in, in places where Ex this is prevalent. Exactly. I mean, generally speaking, the causes of uh, child marriage is poverty, number one. But that is even a fallacy. You go and take that money and now push the child into a perpetual cycle of what? Poverty. 
So yeah. we should do away with that. Teenage yeah. pregnancy is one. Sometimes families feel that, oh, when that happens, let's push the person into that marriage because of uh, shame and whatever. Which one is more shameful? To get into a marriage that you are not happy and you cannot take care of your own children and things of that nature. So the causes that we normally hide behind to give excuses to do this, they do not hold water in the long run. I you agree. will not be able to produce a child that will be, you, can, you yourself will be proud of and mm -hmm. be also productive in this country. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> and I think that it's a shame for any grown man, for a father, uh, to, to use poverty as an excuse. Go out there and go and do some work and take care of your children. Don't sell your children off so that you can be better off. What happens to that child that you're sending away? Yeah. All right, so thank you so much. Is there, I, I, I don't know, there should be either a, a number, a hotline number, or a certain place that people, if you're, if you're really worried about some of these things, you're going through a lot and you need somebody to speak to, we should begin to have um, places like that as well. And I think that's also what is lacking in our country. Like if, if there's something on your mind and you don't want to talk to your parents necessarily, you should be able to go to a counseling outlet somewhere and just say, I want to talk. Sure. You know? So may maybe another time we will talk about what kind of outlets there sure. are sure. for persons sure. like that. But I know the Ministry of Gender, Children and Social Protection has a hotline. I don't have mm. it here in mind. And I also know that uh, DOSU, uh, the Division, the Domestic Div uh, Victim Unit of the Police Service also mm. have some of these hotlines. So mm -hmm. next time when I'm so coming next time program, we, we will share. Will, yeah, okay. All right. Together. But thank you so much. Emmanuel Nyakotete is a child advocate mm -hmm. and he uh, it comes on the show to help us talk about some of these things that are really at the core uh, of every society. So we're grateful. And we make sure that you are a proud Ghanaian against child abuse. That's that's what this campaign is about. So hopefully I've been able to win a few more souls <laughs> to join the campaign. Sure.